Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the reason why my family immigrated to the United States, the Lovell Mill Complex here. This is something that's near and dear to my heart. My family immigrated a little over 100 years ago to Ludlow and settled right here to work in these juke factories. They lived right just down the road on Essex Street in Old Mill Housing, and they worked in these mills. They made their life here. They raised nine children that grew up right around the corner, including my grandmother, who still lives right down the road at 97 years young. Her sister just celebrated her 101st birthday and actually worked here as well. So this mill complex is so part of who I am as a Ludlow resident for four generations, and I'm so pleased today to have uh, Governor Maura Healy on her first Pioneer Valley stop to be right here in the capital. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome someone who is no stranger to the mill. She was here on a day that was a little less rainy than today. Uh, we're so thrilled to have someone who understands the needs of new buildings and aging infrastructure, our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. I'm also so thrilled to also have someone who represents the Hampton County as our high and mighty sheriff, also a Ludlow native, yeah. Sheriff Nick Kochi. <laughs> He's ready to make a quick exit over here. Hold up the wall, Jay. I know. Well, I just wanted to, before I turn it over to the governor to say a few words, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the Ludlow Mills itself and the redevelopment that we're doing here. The building that you're in, Mill 10, was something that was a collaborative effort working as a local, a state, a federal, and also a private partnership to ensure that we have affordable, sustainable housing here in Western Massachusetts. I'm so pleased to have some residents of Mill 10 here today, my friends Vic and Hermine, who are right here in the front row. They love their they love their uh, place upstairs. Um, you guys have been here five years now, correct? Yeah. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, folks over at West Mass. West Mass has done such an incredible job of redeveloping New England's largest grounds field, which is located right here along the banks of the We also have my colleague and my successor in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, who represents the 7th Hampton District, also a Ludlow native and someone who is a member of the Ludlow Select Board when this project was just getting off the ground. It is my pleasure to introduce, to say a few words, my colleague here for the town of Ludlow, State Representative Eric Saunders. Thank you so much for being here, for your commitment to Western Massachusetts, for your commitment to Ludlow. Uh, let me be brief and, and, and just say, as we continue a conversation about housing across the Commonwealth and here in Western Mass, we are standing and sitting in the living proof of how we do this right. I want to thank West Mass and Wind Development for providing the example that I think we can follow across the Commonwealth for finding ways for ample, affordable, and market rate housing to meet the demands that we have in the Commonwealth right now. I'm looking forward to working with Senator Oliveira on this challenge, looking forward to working with the Governor and Lieutenant Governor on this challenge. Uh, I hope uh, across the tour today you're able to see an incredible, incredible outcome from not more than a decade ago where it was just bricks and mortar. Uh, the transformation for folks who have been here since the beginning is nothing short of amazing. Uh, Governor, thank you again. You're welcome back anytime. <laughs> and, and thank you, Senator Major. Thank you, Representative Saunders. Um, just a little bit of background about the Ludlow Mills complex. This last legislative cycle, the Massachusetts House of Representatives and the Massachusetts Senate invested nearly $7.7 .7 million for affordable housing, infrastructure updates, to make sure that this mill complex comes to life. And we are just on the cusp of making that a reality. This Ludlow Mills complex is not only something that's part of our history, but it's also our town symbol. This clock tower right here that you see to my right, your left, was actually the town symbol. 
It's on each one of our police officers, our firefighters. It's on our town symbol. It's on our town flag that hangs in the Great Hall and the State House. This is so much part of the fabric of the community. It's what made it grow. And that's why we are so honored to have Governor Healy here to introduce some of her team and to describe a little bit more in ways in which the new Healy Driscoll administration can be helpful to make sure projects like this come to life. It is my honor to introduce the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, our great friend for Western Massachusetts, Governor Maura Healy. Thank you, Senator. Um, and great to call you Senator. It's terrific to be here. Uh, Representative Saunders, thank you as well. Uh, you know, as we begin today, and where is the good sheriff? He's hiding. He doesn't usually hide. He's not much of a walk. <laughs> All right, this is good. K6, get out of control at our first press conference in the Valley. Got your, got your back, though. Thank you. Um, no, it's always great to see the sheriff, you know, who is uh, as much a part of community and community development, right? Everybody's got their role to play. And here we're, we're having an important conversation about community development and housing in particular, but really this is about a partnership across the board. And, you know, I want to begin by thanking Senator Oliveira and Representative Saunders in particular because the Lieutenant Governor and I are here today to talk about some important legislation that we filed earlier today. We're also here at this location because it was through their efforts that money was actually secured to make sure that this materialized. And so we want to uh, applaud that, celebrate that, and really express our commitment that we're going to look to continue in the same vein. So we look forward to continuing partnership with you both as you do great work, not just for your districts, but for folks across the state. We're really, really grateful. Uh, also grateful to be joined by Jeff Daly and, and folks from the West Mass Association, the West Mass Area Development Corporation. Um, that many of your terrific team. Thank you for the, the, the work here and, and the ongoing work that you do. Alongside another partner, Wind Companies, represented I know by by Gillis here and the team and Mike O'Brien and uh, we really really appreciate Marla, the architect. Um, you know these kinds of partnerships are so so important to where we're going to go. Uh, in terms of our future in the in the state, and you know, we have made and, and Lieutenant Governor will talk about this. Housing is just such a priority for us uh, across the board, and so we really are excited to see um, all that you created here, and excited to introduce our team as well. Joining us today, Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. Um, <laughs> Who actually has a home in Western Massachusetts and uh, is a big, big fan uh, of championing, you know, economic de development and growth uh, through across across regions in Massachusetts. And we were up. Where were we earlier? North Adams. <laughs> North Adams. We had a fun yeah. drive through the through the weather uh, to, to, to get to to love We're thrilled to, to to be here. Also joining us today, um, Under Secretary of Community Development. Uh, Ashley Stoma, who has been here many times and was part uh, during the previous administration, was part of the efforts to, to bring this, to bring projects like this to fruition. So welcome. welcome. <laughs> so today we're announcing the filing of the 2023 Immediate Needs Bond Bill. And again, I want to thank folks on our team, including our Secretary of Administration and Finance, uh, Matt Gorkowitz. Um, as well as Secretary Howe and their teams for their hard and quick work on this. We've just been in office two weeks, and they got, got quickly to work um, to put this legislation together. Um, this legislation seeks $987 million in bond authorization to ensure critical housing and economic development programs across the state, programs that will continue to serve the people of Massachusetts. This includes the production and preservation of affordable rental housing, public housing, climate resilient housing, and transit oriented developments. It also reauthorizes funding for cities and towns, including targeted funding for rural and small towns uh, to support things like libraries, seaport developments, housing, tourism, and planning. It also supports the Middle Mile Broadband Program, which expands high-speed internet to communities across the state 
uh, especially in rural communities, we know how important this is. And one of the most immediate needs addressed in the legislation that we file today is funding MathsWorks. MathsWorks is the largest and most flexible source of capital funds for municipalities for public infrastructure projects. And these projects support housing production, they spur private development, they create jobs all across this state. This bill seeks $400 million for MassWorks and it extends its authorization into fiscal year 2028, which will support important investments in critical infrastructure projects across the state for the next five years. Uh, and we're here today at Ludlow Mills because it's a prime example of the impact of this program and why we want to continue to make sure funding is there. Towns like Ludlow have received several million dollars of MassWorks grants over the years, right, uh, to support the redevelopment in this instance of this historic mill uh, into mixed-use development. And they've developed the beautiful Ludlow Mills Riverwalk, uh, senior independent living uh, and, res and retail and commercial space as well. And we know that with this funding and with the support of all the partners in the room, uh, this has resulted in more housing, more jobs, and the spur of economic development in the area. And this is only the beginning. Um, obviously, we'll plan to file a more comprehensive bond bill in, uh, in, in time to come. Um, but know that uh, we are absolutely thrilled to be here today in Ludlow. You will see us many times in Western Massachusetts. This, this will be an administration that was true to the promises made um, on the trail that we were going to be a team, and we truly are a team, for the entire state. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting to be here today. I don't, I don't mind the weather at all, because the, the, uh, the joy in seeing something materialize, the fruition, right, of, of, of efforts and what's possible when you have intentionality around investment and planning, and you have a commitment to partnership. Um, as was mentioned you know, by the senator, it is, a, it is about the partnership, the local, state, the federal, the private, and to solve the problems that we need to solve today as a commonwealth and to meet the challenges which we can and will meet, it requires that kind of partnership. And in that spirit, I turn it now over to our terrific Lieutenant Governor, uh, Kim Driscoll, who was a fantastic mayor, a leading mayor on so many fronts, understands firsthand the importance of renovating and rehabilitating projects like this and brings the vision you know, for the, the, the capacity and the scope of, of these kinds of endeavors. So, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Kim Driscoll yet, you will come to know and love Kim Driscoll as your Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you. It's a thrill to be here. Uh, this is definitely not my first time here. It won't be our last time here. You can see the pride that facilities like this mean to a community. Both the history of it, going back to Jake, your story about your family starting here, what this particular space meant to our, this community. And we saw that, frankly, in North Adams as well. We have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to older historic infrastructure, but the key to really unlocking that potential is the partnership that exists. So like, kudos to community leaders here in Ludlow, the private sector partners. It's, it's one thing to have an idea, it's another thing to actually make it happen. And you know, Wynn and the Western Mass Development Company and town officials, uh, legislative leaders, along with the state agencies who have been so supportive. I mean, MassWorks has helped you know, match and, uh, and, and incentivize some of the private sector investment. Like, that's how we make these things work. This particular space, lots of memories, meaningful impact on the community, can once again, you know, through the passage of time, need some TLC, as we might say, uh, but through the passage of time, can once again have that meaningful impact in communities. That's good for Ludlow, that's good for our Commonwealth. We certainly want to continue that strong partnership, most assuredly creating the housing needs that we know we have, you know, so, so vital the success of the Commonwealth as we move forward. It was great to be greeted as we came in with folks who actually live here, who know that uh, if these walls could talk, you know what it means now to have a place uh, that can offer housing options for residents who live here, others who want to be here, and continue that vitality. So thrilled, whether it's raining or not, it's always a good experience to be able to look at the historic infrastructure, reinvestment, and know that the state can be a strong partner as we move forward in continuing the advancement and expediting. The last time I was here, we were at the brewery, I just want to point that out, and um, you know, it, it shows you the mix and array of uses that you can have in a facility like this. So,
huge, um, you know, huge opportunity for us to continue and expedite some of that work, and we're looking forward to being strong partners in that regard. So thanks to everyone who's making it happen. Massachusetts is not just one big thing, right? There are many regions. Um, there's not only Berkshire County and Hamden County, but there's Northern Berkshire County and Southern Berkshire County and Hampshire and Franklin and the like, and know that we are going to be attentive to projects, to supporting partnerships in all of those places. And that each place brings its own sensibility, brings its own needs. One of the things we focused on, and you've heard us talk about this, and the Undersecretary can attest to this, we are committed, whether it's through mass works or other funding streams, to the recognition that it isn't always about new housing starts. Housing is an issue across the state. We need more housing, right? We want people to be able to come here, stay here, grow families here. There are regions, and I think this is a great example, where we need to be supporting funding for the preservation and rehabilitation of properties. That's what this represents, and that's just one way in which we are going to be supportive of Western Massachusetts. Uh, we've talked a long time about our support for things like East-West Rail, um, and that support is, is, is strong because we also know that in addition to housing, we need to support a functioning transit system. And I understand that doesn't just involve a large-scale transit system that runs the length of this great state. It also involves support and funding for our regional transit authorities, and other modes of transportation regionally, locally. Um, finally, we continue to uh, express support, you mentioned, uh, for, for things that you know, really go to quality of life. And that's everything from broadband, right? Because people's lives are online, whether you're accessing health care or education or financial health. You know, so much of life is online shopping. And if you don't have access, you're being denied important access to, to rights and privileges that others around the Commonwealth enjoy. And that's why we're really intentional about funding that as well. And finally, I'll say something that I think is near and dear to all of us here um, is continuing to fund and support programs to address much needed issues of mental health and substance use disorder. And that is something that we see across the Commonwealth um, and, and making sure that there is more equity of services and access to services where when you move uh, from the eastern part of the state to the western part of the state, you see those gaps and those disparities. Know that we recognize that and we're going to bring intentional focus to addressing that. Governor, um, what, and the uh, Chinese government will tell me everything I missed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, regional transit authorities, uh, something you mentioned, uh, they are very disconnected in this uh, in Western Mass from all these counties, even between Hampshire and Hampton. I realize this bond bill may not be about that, but can you speak anything to anything about that? Because where there is development, there's jobs, there's people getting to mills, people getting to Springfield, or getting to Amherst. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what, what we'll do is, uh, Carissa Han, our terrific comms director, we'll make sure that you have available to you exactly what it is we filed so that you can see you know, specific projects and programs. And, and let me just reiterate, this isn't the first, this is what's called an immediate needs bond bill that we filed to just really make sure that the programs, MassWorks is an example, that are so important to the Commonwealth continue to run. We don't want them running out of money. So there will be another more comprehensive bond bill. There will also be, in relatively short order, a budget. You'll see us file a budget in March, and you'll see more there um, specific to, to transportation. But all of this ties together. You know, infrastructure, you can't have a conversation about transportation without talking about housing and vice versa. And so you'll see there are, there are any number of things that touch on that. But we completely support strengthening our regional transit systems um, because our economic destiny and we are a commonwealth. We're tied to one another. It really will rise and fall on our ability to make sure that we have functioning transit uh, and affordable places for people to live. Governor, my question for you is National Grid jumps 63% of your billing, Eversource jumps 23%. How are you planning to help the people of Massachusetts struggling to pay their electric bills right now? Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for folks all over the state who are getting 
socked with high heat and electric bills right now. Um, you know, in a prior life, in a prior job, I was your attorney general. We spent a lot of time going up against utility companies who were looking to raise rates. And, you know, I'm not unfamiliar with this as an issue. I um, am very sympathetic to the plight of rate payers right now. We've had some stuff happen with global markets that's hurt all of us, uh, residents and, and commercial entities as well. My team is now reviewing that, we're reviewing the letter that we received and um, asking that uh, that we bring a focus to it, particularly through the Department of Public Utilities. But know that I'm going to do, we will do everything as an administration in our power to uh, to, to fight for ratepayers, to protect ratepayers, um, but also to, to, to explore if there's opportunities for, for relief. Last question. Another question I have for you is, what are your thoughts on Mayor Blue's proposal on rent control on the topic of housing? Um, I have not seen it yet. I have read about it. It was brought to my attention, um, but I just haven't had the chance to, to take a look at it. Um, as a general matter, I'm supportive of anything we can do to increase the affordability, the availability of, of housing, and that can take a number of, of different forms, but I don't have comments specifically on that. Um, we had a big day yesterday. There were a lot of swearing-ins and a lot of things going on, and I just haven't had a chance to look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you.